If it's found that he is half human, would that merely be a scientific curiosity? Or could it fundamentally alter the way we see ourselves? It could be an example of what scientists call basic research, but it would have profound implications for human evolution and our relationship to other species. It, it might suggest, for example, that humans and great apes, in spite of their apparent differences, are much more closely related at the level of their basic biochemistry than heretofore anybody had ever imagined. It was thought that using tools was one of the things which distinguished humans from animals. We now know that chimps routinely use tools to find food. Fishing for termites, a nutrient-rich delicacy, requires skill and patience. We have even discovered that chimpanzees appear to have a form of culture. Culture can be thought of as traditions that are passed down by example rather than instinctively inherited. For example, in one part of Africa, chimps traditionally use a stone to crack nuts, whereas in another area they'll use wood, even though stones are available. The basics of culture, crude though they are, are being seen at work. I remember the first time I met him, he walked over to me to shake my hand. Now, I figured, okay, that may be training. But when he went to shake my hand, he grabbed me at my elbow. And so, unless somebody took the trouble to train him to shake hands in a warm manner, and it's one thing to just extend your hand, it's another thing to extend your hand and give a warm welcome. Uh, I found those things very strange. The culture of a human reflected in an ape. It's the stuff of science fiction. But perhaps creating a Planet of the Apes type of being is not as far-fetched as it sounds. This scientist has applied for a patent on a creature that would be part human and part chimpanzee. A bizarre life form that no one has made before, but which might prove useful for medical experiments in the future. His application was turned down, but Stuart Newman is celebrating The New York Medical College biology professor never intended to make the human-chimp hybrids. He applied for the patent so he could challenge American law, which allows patents on living beings. We objected, as, as many people do, to uh, uh, the privatization of the whole living world, and uh, we were actually interested in seeing whether they would allow a patent that was for a partly human organism, uh, and if they did, then uh, it, it would raise an alert throughout uh, society that uh, this was kind of getting too close to home. The patent office ruled that his invention was too human to be patentable. Undaunted, Professor Newman has filed an appeal which he hopes will force a rethink on the policy of allowing patents on living beings. I feel rather that um, it's, it's important for working scientists to be the ones who also warn about the consequences of taking the science too far. We need rules, regulations, and, and a public consciousness about it. It all serves to raise deep moral and religious dilemmas. Perhaps it raises the biggest question of them all. I asked a judge this question. I said, how many human genes would you have to give a monkey in order for that monkey to be able to win human rights in a court of law? He said, if this monkey is more than 50% human genetically, I would prosecute it for murder. I said, did you know that the monkey is already 98% human because we are close cousins? In that case, he said, if you put the right 1.1% of the human genes into a monkey, that monkey will be more human than animal in a court of law. Oliver's friends believe there's something about him that's eerily human. There's somebody in there. There's someone in there with a heart, a soul, who feels. You can see it through his eyes. You can feel it when, he's, when, when you're in his presence. And that's, that's the truth. I've always felt it. And everyone that has ever come in contact with him has the same exact feeling. Something is in there more than an animal. If Oliver does turn out to be more than just an animal, it raises many questions with no easy answers.
What would you do with the hybrid? Would the hybrid be maintained in a cage? Would the hybrid be given human rights? Um, what are the implications that this would have for how we treat chimpanzees? Can we justify continuing to do research on chimpanzees if, in fact, humans and chimpanzees can interbreed? So it has profound uh, moral, ethical, social, religious, political implications for how we think about ourselves in relationship to other species. I think the issue of who Oliver is, and particularly in relationship to half-human, half-ape, and those issues, raises the basic fundamental question that we all have of who are we. Anything that raises that question will be fascinating to us. Michael Miller donated Oliver to a wild animal park in California. When that went out of business, Oliver bounced from trainer to trainer and disappeared. There were rumors that he was in a circus. Others thought he'd been sold off for medical research. But the man who had tried to buy Oliver had never forgotten him. I lost total track of him. It wasn't until many years later, like 20 years later, that uh, I came into some money, and the first thought on my mind was, I'm going to find Oliver. But Oliver had been missing for a very long time, and the trail had gone cold. Then, just when he was about to give up, Vincent got a break. I called everyone I knew and everyone I didn't know, and I did finally track him down. He was only two and a half hours away from where I was living at the time. What Vincent discovered shocked him. Oliver had ended up in a research laboratory in Pennsylvania. There, he'd languished in a five-foot by seven-foot cage for nine long years. I had found him at the Buckshire Institute. They have a lot of chimpanzees, and they're used for experiments. And I was totally opposed to that, so I called a friend of mine in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Wally Sweat runs an animal sanctuary called Primarily Primates, and he offered to help. Fortunately, Oliver had never been used in any experiments. And in 1996, the Buckshire Corporation agreed to hand over Oliver and 11 other chimpanzees to Wally. -E. 